My name is Jerry. Rainwater in the private sewage system, like a septic tank, treatment plant, even in a pumping station. Look at this large roof space. I'm just going to give you a little example, or one example, that I came across during my travels. Um, this is a guttering, and it goes directly um, into soakaways. Proper soakaways, no problem at all. However, um, at the top here, as you see this um, this pipe, it's come adrift it's come apart the leaves has forced it apart and the water has been cascading down this corner of the building hitting the patio and I've just put this hose here just to demonstrate the water going down this and I can see there there's a, a little sink which is feeding this gully which is a foul one obviously we can conclude that the rainwater from the guttering and the rainwater from this large patio is all going down that gully which disturbs the um, effluent in the tank which should be settled now bear with me i'm going to go inside the tank and i'm going to disturb it just like the rainwater would just to demonstrate you'll still be able to hear me on this internal microphone i'm going to steal the bottle up here i go uh, oh it's a little bit i can just get used to this breathing and i say oh here we go What we're talking about here in this video is if you have a Christmas party or a gathering of people of 25 or even 40 people using the toilet, flushing the, flushing, uh, flushing the toilet away, uh, washing the hands, whatever, you're going to have an extra surge, whether you get it from the rainwater or whether you get it from a party. Food stuff, the undigested and the digested, stirs up and gets through into the soakaways, if you've got soakaways. If you haven't, and it's tapped into a river, then it goes straight into the river. And that is if it's a septic tank or a treatment plant, because they're both, as I said, uh, on settlement. This tank hasn't been emptied for a year. That's quite normal based on my experience and what I've seen and what I've felt inside this tank. This tank would probably go another year. But the rainwater has got to come out. You can imagine that the septic tank or the treatment plant, if it's designed, which it is uh, in this case, uh, for, for settlement, in other words, it's got a settlement chamber before the treatment area or the septic tank's got two chambers and one is settlement. And the engineer has designed it for four people in the case of a septic tank and six people in the case of a treatment plant. And then it pours down with rain. How many people has the, has the engineer designed it for? How many people is a downpour of rain? You can imagine if the rain's pouring down the guttering and then going down the foul system and then into this tank and disturbing it. You can imagine that's hundreds and hundreds of people in a very short period of time. So installation of a sewerage treatment plant for a small domestic property. First of all, we check the ground to make sure there's no electric cables that we haven't been told about and any water mains that are live and may give us a problem. Anything that we do bust or break, we can repair. We have the equipment, we have the fittings. Once satisfied, 
we then lay out the polythene in order to make the cleanup operation a lot more efficient. We remove the turf rather than bring some in from the farm because we want the consistency of the colour in the grass for the client. Now these turfs, even if you lay them upside down, they'll still grow back, providing they're given some water. There's been a lot of work in the background to install this treatment plant, contacting the environmental agency, for instance, and the local authorities. They need to be satisfied. Now this ground is infill, what we call infill. The ground is very dry. This is not natural ground. You normally have a little bit of topsoil and then you'd find this type of soil eventually about 300 or 400 deep. We're getting into this type of soil straight away. Just check in here to make sure once again that there's no water main or electric cable. The treatment plant is delivered on a flatbed lorry and the chaps are well rehearsed in doing this. The digger is big enough so that it can lift this right across all the shrubbery in the trees and there's no danger to the operator. Although this treatment plant is quite big, it's made of glass fibre and needs to be protected by concrete, which we'll do later. All the men have safety certificate plans you'd appreciate. Protecting the grass, although the grass is very hard and firm here, when the digger shifts or moves, especially when it turns, it will rip up the grass. So we use these eight before ply sheets. Customers often say you wouldn't even know we've been there. The digger is big enough to lift the plant, the treatment plant, over the top of the hedgerow. Choosing the right side digger is crucial. As you can see here, the machine is tall enough or high enough to bring it right across the top of the hedgerow and the small apple trees. Although the treatment plant is huge inside, it's very, very light. So the ratio for the digger can stretch his arm more than he would if that was a larger weight. You get a size of the treatment plant just by comparison with the men. Now this is the graden bucket they've got on here. And we're just removing this turf where the treatment plant is going to be installed. Now this turf is not necessarily going to go back, just put it round the treatment plant in some sort of order. We use the graden bucket just for the first 300. And what he's doing is just removing the top surface. Now normally this would be top soil, but as I said before, this is infilled. We're going to put it into this dumper. This particular customer has asked for it to be, instead of taking it away, the customer has asked to be tipped in a field, which we're obliged to do because that's the customer's requirements. Now we've changed the bucket now, and we've got the the one with the large teeth. Now this will dig into the ground. Now this means we're very confident that there's no cables or water mandrake, no live electric there. However, there is a old water main from one of the farms from years ago. And even though we know it's not in operation, we'll be very careful with it, we'll be cautious. And as you can see, we're using the digger which is big enough to get right over the top of the hedgerow and straight into the large dumper here. So efficient that the dumper doesn't have to come into the ground itself. I think one of the advantages of dealing with ASL is they are so good at teamwork, they're so good at talking to each other. Here's that main I was talking about. And we're just testing it and just making sure, just one more last check and then we'll remove it. 
we have assessed it's a, a, an old water main. It's not being used, but we take a lot of care before we remove it. So we're just going to cut it off, and there it goes. And look at the condition of that after all these many, many years. And here's our chap back now for, to have his next load. They all work really well as a team. This bucket means that we're very confident now that every, all the pipes and all electricity has been removed and we're just going to crack on now. This is a very efficient bucket to use. So now we get on with the installation and we dig into the acquired depth. We now consolidate the base. Uh, we use uh, hardeners to get the base to go off very quickly ready for the treatment plant. The base has already gone off. The hole for the treatment plant has got to be exactly right because this treatment plant can pop out the ground if it's not installed correctly. So we've got to get it in there nice and level. We then secure it by placing concrete underneath it and all around it. This customer has asked if it could be slightly lower than the norm just so there's a small amount of lid protruding. And here you have the concrete. We have it mixed off-site at the concrete plant. They're the people that mix precisely to order. You can see the grab efficiently picks up the concrete, places it in the dumper. This time the dumper has to go into the property, into the garden and tip over the treatment plant after protecting it with a board with an 8 4 sheet of ply. And again you can imagine the efficiency here, the coordination of the team once again. We're making this look rather easy but I believe you me, if you don't get everything timed, if you don't get everything coordinated, it can be a lot of wasted time. These men have done this job time and time again and it's just a day's work really or it's just a couple of days work. And if they see any problems, they recognize these problems and they put them right as they go along. And that's the thing about having experts is because they see things that the novice wouldn't actually see. The reason we put in concrete around this chamber is one, to protect the chamber from any stones and whatever around the treatment plant, but also in wet ground, which this could be, because it's typical of putting in a treatment plant anyway, that you're in non-porous ground. And the idea of putting the concrete around is to stop it popping out the ground. What we do is we fill the treatment plant up with water. We've already put 600 gallon in there, and we're just topping it up now. This is just a picture of um, pipes that was installed in Pichingo. Now here we have the electrician which is fully qualified. He is an electrician but he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty and his work is patiently done. He's not in any rush, he's not in the way of anyone. The timing once again when he does this work for safety reasons and to get it right the first time. And the reason you'd use ASL is because they just do this all the time. This area where the air pump is, is a small cocoon which would be under the trim. There it is on the top right hand side of the screen. That's, a, that's the air blow inside there. Now, these men are really proud of what they do. They, they enjoy their work and you can see that from these three here.